Hello, I am K. Balakrishnan and this is the Lens on News Pitch Report, our special presentation on the Lok Sabha elections now underway in the country. In these reports, we shall be focusing on the ground situation in key states, the salient issues animating the voters and how the main parties are placed as they head into the elections. Today, in the first of our presentations, we look at the important state of Tamil Nadu. And with me is uh, Mr. G. V. G. V. Narasimha Rao, a well-known psychologist and uh, member of the BJP. Mr. Rao, uh, Tamil Nadu, as you know, has always uh, played a very important role at the center with uh, one of the retributive parties being an ally of the ruling formation, uh, the ruling central government. And, uh, but for the first time, we are witnessing a strange situation in which both the Dravidian parties are uh, fighting the election separately on their own and uh, for the first time again uh, the BJP heading a multi-party alliance. How do you look at this? I, I think uh, uh, if, you, if you look back uh, into history, electoral history, in Tamil Nadu the, B, the, the AADMK had fought the elections all alone, almost on its own, in 2004, when the party contested on 33 of the 39 seats, and uh, it had it had done very well in terms of securing the popular vote. Almost 30% uh, of the popular vote went to the AADMK in 2004, but in terms of seats, the party drew a blank, and uh, the DMK had really not gone into elections, Lok Sabha elections, all in all by itself since 1991 only in 1991 and in the election before that in 1989 they fought elections all alone and in both elections the DMK drew a blank this tells us a story and, and, and on both occasions the DMK polled uh, much below 30 percent of the vote so but what it tells us is that the the, the two Dravidian parties have a sizable vote, yes. uh, sizable support base in Tamil Nadu, exactly. but yes. on their own, they cannot really convert that into any uh, big harvest of seats. And true, and that's the reason uh, the between the two Dravidian parties, you always had a balancer, the Congress with a 15% vote, or when the BJP was ruling at the center, BJP on one side. Yes, see, that made the difference. But this time, see, the, the two parties, Dravidian parties, of on their own without either the BJP or the Congress with either of them. Yeah, that's true. But also, you see, the Congress has become a, a completely irrelevant force in this present election. Absolutely. Uh, untouchable. Uh, untouchable. Yeah, but you also know how top leadership of the Congress party in Tamil Nadu have uh, uh, literally refused to fight elections. It's a very strange situation. The top leaders, I think you would know them better. Chidambaram had uh, had refused to contest. His son is contesting from his uh, uh, yes. traditional yes. civil yes. Vasan has refused to contest. Oh. Jayanti Natarajan has refused to contest, yes. And then the entire leadership of Tamil Nadu, except, except uh, Manushankar Manush Iyer, who throws himself into uh, every uh, uh, difficult situation. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has literally run away from the battlefield. But more importantly, I think the parties which have aligned with the smaller parties like the PMK, the NDMK, the DMDK have always won the elections in Tamil Nadu. If you look at the recent uh, yes. four or five elections, when, I, I when, think they have they allied, have, when they have allied with one or the other, they have been able to transfer votes and win. Uh, Absolutely. But, but today, the, the six party alliance with the BJP heads, you see, most polls that we have. Today, I think there were three major opinion polls that were done in Tamil Nadu, which have uh, come out with their own projections in the last one month. Uh, all the polls, uh, none of them give the BJP uh, uh, led alliance more than 22% vote, which to my mind is a gross underestimate. Because if you look at the 2009 performance of these six parties, together all these parties have polled nearly 23% of the popular vote. Without the BJP? Without, no, without, no, I'm, I'm adding up all the six parties which are currently in this BJP-led alliance. They have together polled 23% votes, but they have not won a single seat. But this 23% includes only 2% of the BJP in 2009. But today, I'm sure you would agree that the BJP is uh, really, there is a lot of groundswell of support for uh, uh, Mr. Modi, in, even in Tamil Nadu. Yes. And therefore, the BJP is likely to go well past 10% in terms of popular vote. 
actually uh, the estimates are that the BJP has something like 15, 16, 18 percent you know, uh, support and uh, Modi himself uh, has the, the choice for PM is pulling in a support of something like 40 40 percent plus. Uh, that's something which we, this is this is remin this is reminiscent of 1998 with right. uh, Vajpayee is the prime ministerial candidate of the BJP and uh, mind you in 1998 all the polls all the polls underestimated the BJP led alliance which included uh, Jailantas AIA DMK but they went on to sweep the polls in Tamil Nadu. So Tamil Nadu has proved more often than not as a confounding state Absolutely. and which is difficult very, very, to really call. Very difficult to call. So I think I, I have a feeling if all the states, if, if, uh, if you look at all the states in the country, it is the projections in Tamil Nadu that the, that the media channels have, have made. I think the Tamil Nadu is to be looked at with a great deal of circumspection, if not uh, uh, some kind of suspicion. Because if you look at uh, the polls, I think none of them are giving this alliance any chance, not more than five seats. And the polls are based on very thin samples. Very thin samples. The CSTS, uh, CNN, IBN, 1400 uh, samples. 1400 samples for a state like Tamil Nadu. I do understand that. I have also done national polls. It's difficult to take very large samples. But on the basis of a small sample like 1400 in Tamil Nadu, your findings are likely to have a huge margin of error, close to 10 percentage points. So 10 percentage points uh, uh, in terms of margin of error could really throw your projections completely out of gear. Particularly because this is not a you know, two-sided um, uh, two race anymore, it is very very tough three-sided three race. There is no yeah. doubt about so, that. So, so certainly there are certain unique features about this election and the one unique point is that the two Dravidian points as you rightly started open the, this discussion the two parties are fighting this election all by themselves and it is a truly a three horse race but I, I have a feeling as I said that we need to look out for further polls because exit polls are banned yes. but opinion polls are not oh, yes. so in the in the in the run-up to this election in Tamil Nadu I think we will be getting closer to the election another important point is uh, when the polls were taken, when the opinion polls were done, the BJP alliance was still in the making. That's right. So the actual uh, import of such an alliance on the ground would have taken some time to really crystallize and to, to get captured. Because even after the you know, uh, alliance was you know, arrived at a very late stage, for the candidates to be nominated and you know, to, be, you know, to hit this uh, campaign trail that took further time. Yes. So only now the campaign is really on. Yes. and. Uh, there are plus points and minus points for the BJP alliance. One is that, uh, you see, uh, there, is the, there is a great deal of tension between the two of the important uh, you know, partners in the alliance, that is DMDK, Vijay Khan's DMDK and uh, Dr. Ramadas' uh, PMK. Uh, they are fighting for the same uh, areas uh, of influence and um, they are not really campaigning together. But you see, and, uh, uh, as this has happened very late into the election, and their votes perhaps will not transfer very easily between one, of, one another. But they are all looking to ride the, the Modi wave. The Modi wave. <laughs> and everybody is taking the Mo, no, name of Modi. They are saying, don't vote for me, don't vote for me. So, so Modi has, in a way, Mr. Modi has emerged as the unifying factor. That's for right. all the parties in the alliance and one interesting thing I think you would have also I have, I have observed in this election is parties which are fighting against the BJP on the ground, parties which are seeking votes for themselves are also not campaigning against Modi and in fact many of them are signaling that we are willing to support him in the post election scenario, we are willing to do business with him. So so in a way Modi has become uh, uh, the center for a pillar of this election and every, most of parties have realized that to take him on would be going against uh, the tide of public opinion and everyone seems to be either directly riding it as a part of the NDA alliance or, or silently sort of uh, sidestepping this wave and somehow survive and, and uh, win a handful of seats so that they can really politically they can become very relevant. Yes, uh, Karunanadi uh, definitely has done this kind of signaling. And uh, even Jayalalitha, that was the motivation for dropping the Communist Women Alliance. And uh, so that you know, she can maximize her strategy is to maximize the number of seats that she can get and maximize her club at the center so that she can do business with Modi.
So, so I think this is uh, uh, of all the states. You see, the South has really become. See, many of the states in the North and in the East. I think you remember we have done for the lens on news. We did polls for Bihar. So That's before right. Nitish actually broke his ties with the uh, the BJP, we had told him that he would be extinguished. He would simply not be winning any seats in Bihar. A lot of people didn't th thought this was uh, a rather preposterous. But now, more or less, all the polls are indicating to that. Okay. Similarly, in, in our Uttar Pradesh poll, which we published almost, I think, 10 months ago, we said there was a wave building for Narendra Modi, and BJP could really win 50 plus seats with Modi as the prime ministerial candidate, which has turned out to be true. The two states which have really, I think, uh, are keeping the suspense right until the end in this election are, I think, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh. and uh, with, with a big chunk of 42 seats. And it is Andhra Pradesh that we will be uh, discussing next in our uh, uh, the current series of Lens of News Pitch Report. Thank you.